Welcome everyone to this episode of Manufacturing Talk Radio. I'm Tim Grady. I'm here with Lou Weiss. Together we're the hosts of this show. Lou is also the president of All Metals and Forge Group, a manufacturer of open die forgings and seamless roll rings for the industrial space. So if you're looking for that, check it out at steelforge.com. Today joining us is Tina Zwolinski, who is with Skills Gap. That's S-K-I-L-L-S-G-A-P-P.com. Tina, welcome to the show. We're excited to hear what you have to say about helping manufacturing space bridge the skill gap. Well, I'm excited to be here with the both of you and to continue this conversation about this passion of the, the next generation coming up and how your listeners are innovating to capture their attention. So give our audience a, a kind of a brief scenario of what Skills Gap is and does, and then we'll kind of get into the detail. So Skills Gap uses technology. We specifically focus on video games in the mobile phone world. And that is because if you see any Gen Z, which is middle school, high school, right outside of high school, they all have a phone glued to their hand. And even in this uh, post-COVID, COVID timeframe, the growth of the use of video games amongst students, they're using it for social connections. They're using it for anything really to um, really help their mental state. So the, the potential for growth and what the kids are doing on this really came this wonderful idea of let's, they're using the phone time, they're using it seven plus hours a day and that's non-educational usage. What if we were to take that same time frame? We're not gonna make them use the phone less, but what if we look for ways to encourage this next generation to get into the workforce through really fun gaming experiences that expose them to the types of careers that are out there and the pathways right around them into those careers? Is that um, uh, uh, it's an interesting uh, spin on uh, uh, kids using uh, the technology? I, I've heard, and I'm sure you've heard as well, that you know there there are some who believe that you know too much of this for kids using mobile devices where they're not socializing, they're being social but not socializing. That is not good for them. So how do you how do you handle that? You know, we, we hear that a lot. And I will right. admit on this recorded podcast that okay. as a parent of uh, youth that played video games for a long time, I, you know, I grew up, we had to be outside uh, right. until we were frozen. And then we were allowed to come in and warm up. But we were building forts and uh, out playing sports. And so it was really hard with my own kids to, you know, kids do not go out and play. They ride bikes, they do play sports, but a lot of the social interaction now is just on gaming. And so as a parent watching that, it really became, okay, this is where they're going to be and we're really not going to change it. The world as we know it is moving to only have kids more on their phones uh, in the digital world especially with just learning the last few years and with college too, that, that that's here to stay. And so, although in my mind, I would love to have kids out in the real world more, the fact is that it's not going to change. And so let's do good and do some good things with the world that they're in that will get them into places where they can have social interaction with others and create incredible technology and innovate uh, manufacturing in a way that really changes the world. And so if we need to start in this digital world uh, to get them to the real world, let's do meaningful work. Um, our mantra is, is to um, really look to have a higher purpose with students. And so we spell that H-I-R-E. And so with the games that we create that we're always moving to, let's look at how we can develop these kids from soft skills, to middle skills in aerospace, automotive, uh, cybersecurity, life sciences. Uh, how can we move them to a position where they are discovering their interests? And 
through a lot of the gaming, they really start to begin to see some of those soft skills come to life where they can have accuracy and speed and showing up. And, and they do relate with their friends. It, over COVID, you know, suicide rates were up high and I think we can acknowledge that. And a lot of the social interaction with this generation really became that connectivity through the digital world. It's hard for all of us to understand looking back, but it really is becoming a meaningful world. And when we look at technology and where it's going with your audience, the metaverse, we're hearing about this, Facebook is rebranding. Uh, we're hearing about Microsoft, what's happening within gaming. So even that's going to take us into this more immersive world where now in the next you know, five to 10 years, not only will we be looking at each other or for those who are just listening, um, when you engage with uh, social media, now you're just looking at something, but it's going to move to be more of where you're in the environment. So it's going to become even more of a digital world, which is um, scary and exciting all at once. We'll be all holograms. Yes, we're going to be holograms. And whew, the <laughs> plastic surgery you can do in a hologram is pretty amazing. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> we'll all I remain think, young. <laughs> I think that uh, your response was uh, well, uh, well stated and well intended, that it's here anyway, so we may as well use it. Yeah. Uh, what are you yeah. seeing and yeah. hearing from your out there and your listeners? Obviously, workforce is the same word that we hear. Here we are at the end of 21. We're going into 22. It's still the number one word used by everybody in economic development, workforce development, manufacturing, especially. What are you hearing from listeners and when you're out on the road that that's happening in workforce development that's new or or what are you seeing? Uh, Tim, I got some words on it. You want to jump in first? Uh, sure, sure. I think it's interesting, Tina. And I'm just going to do a segue here to that. Some 50 years ago, a new disk operating system was introduced by Bill Gates called DOS. And he built his programs on top of that. And one of the things that was included in those programs was a game. So your approach to using a game to build skills captures that brilliance that Gates used. The game is called Solitaire. And it was, it was put on the computer so that the individual could get over their fear factor of using a computer. That was the purpose of putting, and everybody knew the game. I so never knew that connection. That's a great story. That's the purpose of Solitaire on a computer so that people could get over their fear factor by knowing a game and wanting to play it. So yeah. your approach to that is going to be brilliant. Uh, you know, what we're hearing is what everybody's hearing out there. There are, if there's something like 890,000 jobs available in manufacturing today, there are something like 767,000 workers available for those jobs, according to a report that came out this morning from the National Association of Manufacturing. So you've got three quarters of a worker per job needed to be filled, not enough people. And certainly they have a huge skill problem because they don't have the skill sets being built in high school that when they graduate from high school, they can go into manufacturing. That used to be the case, not so much anymore. And so everybody's struggling. And I think your approach to using games on a mobile device, which as you say, they have glued to their hand, is a very brilliant way to go. You know, I think about the amount of how large Gen Z is and just where that gap is that you're talking about those jobs and the people. So we've got the boomers that are retiring out with all that knowledge that they could be passing on or even mentoring. We have the lack of awareness Kids do not know and, and teachers are overloaded with what to get out in the classroom and really aren't, there are many that are connected to what's happening in industry, but a lot that do not have the time or the bandwidth to be able to share with the students all the details of those careers. And same with guidance counselors and parents. You know, parents, you know, when you, when you play on that stigma, 
my generation, Gen X, came from a generation where they were maybe the first to go to college. And so to our generation, we were, you have to go to college. You can't get a job without being in college. So then we turn down to Gen Z is, would be my children's age, not the millennial, but skipping down to Gen Z. And we still feel a little bit of that panic. Like, we, are we going to say that our child is going to a technical college? Or, or you know, do we not encourage four year? Are we okay with a certificate? Well, being in the industry, I had a branding and marketing firm for 25 years before launching the company Skills Gap. And we did workforce development and we also did gen uh, youth, um, consumer brands and nonprofits. And it really was seeing that struggle in the economic development workforce and then watching this next generation that they were going off to school and not really sure what they wanted to study. Or as you talk to them, um, and I mentor with a lot of youth and you'd ask them, what are you doing? And, and they had the basic generic career answers, uh, but we're not exposed to all the opportunities out there. And so the, the, the students are there. The, the, the challenge is how do we get to them in a way that can make them aware of, hey, when, before you enter high school, you should start thinking about some of these courses and a CTE program and the skilled trades. Well, as an electri electrician or a plumber, you could be making $100,000 and not have any college debt. So these kids will learn anything on YouTube. The, my son has rebuilt car engines from, YouTube, from learning on YouTube. And so if they start to engage with some things and, and you know, the data from hand-eye coordination and uh, development and learning and recall is significant. So if the kids are able to get into some things that are fun and they get exposed to different types of careers that are possibly out there, but in a fun way, not curriculum, heavy curriculum, they're actually playing fun games and learning as they go. Um, they, get, they start to realize their passions and that they're good at things. And now they can start asking parents or teachers or um, anyone at school, hey, I'm, I'm playing something in aerospace and I didn't know that with the maintenance side that there's these possibilities or in life sciences, uh, there's some things in the lab that I could be doing. I just thought there was nursing, which we need nurses too, but you start to get them kind of flipping the conversation. So now they have in their hands uh, information where they can start advocating on behalf of their future and the pathways that go into that future. Now they know you just could get a certificate or this company has an apprenticeship program. So the sooner we can get these students where they are you know, middle school age, where they start to learn and understand, okay, going into high school, I should start thinking about some of these courses or programs. I should look at a youth apprenticeship because pretty much you'll be guaranteed a job if you show up with you know, the willingness to work and, and just show up actually. <laughs> so there's really looking at those opportunities and there's a lot of good things. I was asking you like what you had um, heard out there and, and we've seen over the years, you know, there's websites that people do. There are videos that people have. There are mobile experiences that manufacturing is taking out. And all of those are really good uh, as a whole. But individually, once someone visits the website, they have to navigate it. And if it's difficult to navigate, you lose them. If they watch a video, they watch it one time and there's no engagement back and forth. So they've watched it and then you kind of lose them and you lose the conversation. Uh, with an experience, you have to be able to get that experience around to people. So the scalability of that is challenging, but the impact is really powerful once the student gets into an environment like that and can engage with that. But when you get to things like gaming or AR or VR experiences, and I, I'm, I'm gonna put apprenticeships in that because I'm a, I'm a big component of apprenticeships because you get into this experience, you get the hands on and you're, you're going at your pace of learning. And then you start to kind of like in gaming and AR, VR, the AI starts to form where your strengths are and, and keeps building you along this pathway, just like an apprenticeship, a person identifies your strengths or weaknesses and starts to help you along this pathway and guide you. 
And so if we look to how are we going to get that generation to even know that these jobs exist and then not to think that they're um, high risk of layoffs and that you don't have the opportunity to earn a really good income and you have benefits and uh, possibilities of your education continuing on and being paid for, to have those conversations with the students, uh, we really have the potential to um, close the skills gap, and change the lives of these students and impact the communities that these students are going to be part of that workforce and give back to those communities. So I challenge the listeners to, you know, just like uh, Apple challenged all of us to think differently, to think differently about computers, that they can be more friendly, like what we were just, you know, our conversation a few minutes ago, that a phone can be more than something hanging on a wall with a cord, that it can be a computer that takes us places, connects us. And so how do we think about the tools that are out there now and how they're changing and take workforce and innovate with those so that we're closing the skills gap and we're, we're having an impact on this next generation. And so industry can do more and companies can do more. You know, I, I ask a lot, like imagine what you could do if workforce was no longer a challenge. What could your company do? What could the industry and the state you're in be doing? Uh, how could you recruit if you had this ongoing pipeline that was interested in your careers um, that you're offering? One of the things that uh, you mentioned a few moments back was, you know, what what are we what are we hearing uh, from <clears throat> people in the know. And uh, the skill gap certainly is one of them. Um, and, and there are things that are going on as you presented very uh, aptly about the things that are beginning to teach new people new skills, which is a, a great long-term uh, project or long-term uh, eventuality. One of the problems, the other problem that we hear now is that, and Tim mentioned, uh, there's 890,000 um, vacant jobs right now in manufacturing. And the word in the street is that if we don't change the way we're doing things right now, not 10 years from now, but right now to change that, that in two and a half years or three years, I forgot which one, that one point, that million, is going to be two and a half, three million, yeah. which only exacerbates the skill gap problem, because in those years, there are more people that are at, at the rate of 10,000 retirees a day are leaving the workforce. So the workforce, the, the tribal intelligence is leaving before we have the uh, appropriate mechanism to replace them, educate them in the short term. I don't know, does any of what you're doing have a effectively a shorter term effectiveness? And I, I'll give you a, for, for instance, I know I asked you a question, but as an example, there's an organization called VEI and it's called Virtual Entrepreneurship International. And what they do is uh, they sell a program to high schools for the last two years of high school, 11th and 12th grades. And they teach kids how to create an idea, do the marketing and actually create a company. And they run a company by this class mechanism that they're using. And when they come out, and I forgot, there's 500 schools throughout the United States right now that are doing this. When there's a significant number of percentage, and I don't recall it, of how many of those kids continue on into an entrepreneurial uh, uh, experience right after high school. They, they skip right over the tech schools, skip right over college. I know how to make money, and they've learned how to make it how to manage it, how to market it, and so on. It's really a, a fascinating uh, uh, exercise. I but love that. 
And it really is when you have a mentor a program, my nephew was similar to that story. It wasn't that program, but it was a very similar program that he had in high school. And he went right into the film industry in Atlanta with lighting and all because of that experience in that program in high school. For the so immediate gaffer. <laughs> he um so for the immediate need that that is a big concern because the jobs are there now and we need things out in the market and we need to be competitive and and i speak specifically here in the u.s and how and how we fill those jobs you know you look at the numbers of jobs lost so we've been challenged on a couple of the games that we're in works on now that even in the skilled trades how do we look at those that have lost their jobs during covid and then the transitioning military and those that have come out of high school but have not gone on to college it's specifically the last couple of years or have chosen to step back from college and so you know you, you look at the states and the initiatives within the states of the apprentice apprenticeship awareness program what i like about mobile and there are plenty of other opportunities out there with mobile but i'm going to speak to gaming because it is real time and with geolocation uh, within gaming, you can actually focus on a certain area. So I'm, I'm in South Carolina is where our headquarters are. And if you think of, just to explain this to the listeners, if a student is playing a game, it does not need to be a student because gaming, the average age for gamers is 35 to 44. But you know, all ages play games. So with gaming, you have the opportunity to actually make people aware that are playing the game. Hey, there's uh, a job fair within this industry that you're playing this game and we want you to come to it. And you can do um, a push notification or an email that invites them because they're playing and they're already showing interest in that field that let's go ahead and go after those that are already showing an interest versus opening up a uh, job fair and training for all only to have that person drop out after the first week and not show up without a phone call. And we all know what it costs to train people and what happens with turnover. So if through you know support with marketing and, and efforts around apprenticeships and, and programs like gaming, that we're able to capture several people due to rewards, hey, you could be getting these real real life rewards within these experiences to capture their attention. And then they're made aware of right now, this company up the street needs 30 people in what you're playing. Come, come talk to us. And then you get them into it or you get them into an apprenticeship. And now you've got their hands on and you've got that mentor role, Lou, that you were talking about. You get a mentor in someone's life and it radically changes um, the direction of that um, person's career. I don't know if you watched, it was a Netflix, I think it was a Netflix, it, this is being recorded, so I'm going to be held to this, but it was on the SpaceX launch um, of, the, of the citizens that weren't astronauts that went that took off this year. Uh, and the girl at SpaceX, and I'm drawing a blank on her name right now, that led the mission for SpaceX, you know, training the civilians and then guiding that, uh, that launch, yeah, she's young. And uh, she shared her story in that, in that documentary that she was on one pathway and there was someone in high school that was a mentor that, uh, that saw her skills and acknowledged it and told her you would be really good in going into this engineering type role. And now she works for SpaceX and is launching rockets. Um, and so it was that mentor role. So there, there are those opportunities too, where that next generation can mentor into the younger and, and be able to see those skills. And it really becomes like, here's the math formula and students are like, oh, I can't, I'm not interested in that. But if you tell them <clears throat> you can solve and save lives through life sciences and here's a problem that you can solve or you can go to space but it starts here in these courses, but this is what you can do. And then the students understand, oh, okay, I like makeup and that's life sciences. And, and so now I get why those courses are important and I can do the work because I know what it's gonna take me to and what I can solve through it. And so it's kind of flipping why it's important to have that foundation and what that can do for you. That's, uh, okay. <laughs> Important for any of us to know why. When I went why? to 
school and I was learning geometry. And I said, why? why? I learned <laughs> this miserable course. <laughs> or some people have had to take it twice <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to learn the same stupid theorems again. <laughs> yeah. well, and may I, need to take we, it a third time. <laughs> I've never used it since. Who does geometry? <laughs> even, even, you know, in our business, we use a lot of numbers and, and drawings and pictures and so on. Never used geometry ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tina, we applaud what you're doing. Let me ask you one final question as we wrap this up. Your company, Skills Gap, remember, double P at the end, folks, dot com actually does the coding of the games for the company? Yeah, so we, we have a base model of all our games. We focus on middle skills um, within the industries of uh, uh, automotive, aerospace, life sciences, cybersecurity, uh, skilled trades with the soft skills baked in. But where we come in on that last 30% with the partners that we um, come together with for the games is we customize the content for that state or region. So the player is being fed information about what that industry needs specific to the jobs that are available and also the pathways, whether it's a community college within a five mile drive, they get fed the pathways into those jobs that are right in their sphere that they can have success in. And so that's where that customization that we do in the games makes it very unique to the success of the player. We want them to be able to get into careers and then the industry in that area to benefit from the skills that meet their needs and the jobs that they have. And so that's where that, um, that customization comes in on that last little bit is we can't um, be, you know, generalize it for all, but having that specific, almost like that, you know, that in-game mentorship uh, for the success of the one player. One last question again <laughs> is, uh, are there sample games on your website? I, I have not had an opportunity to look yet. Yes, if you dig into the site, there'll be um, a demonstration in there. Again, the games are customized for our partners. We launched a year ago. We have three games in play. Um, and then we were in the process of um, working with five other partners right now on games. So we're really excited about what's happening, it, it is um, innovative. And so it needs to be someone, uh, a group that is, hey, we need to try something different and are willing to sort of take that risk to be the pioneers in a shifting workforce into thinking about play with workforce and how that goes. So uh, we're excited about the potential of it and especially the next couple of years, how this uh, gaming is, is just really taking off. Well, I wish you luck with it. And I also would suggest that uh, you, uh, as you develop and bring on new systems programs or what have you to certainly keep us in mind to uh, have, have you on the show again. And we also have, uh, we also have a, uh, a magazine, a e-zine that we call Manufacturing Outlook. And uh, perhaps uh, we can get a, uh, article about uh, gaming outlook that's fantastic uh, we're working on that for you so and that's a great magazine there's so much great content in there of what's happening now so i love it <laughs> we're excited to be in it <laughs> <laughs> okay that's great tina it's a it's a pleasure and, and we always have a couple laughs we do it was great talking to you both this morning and the brightness of your yellow jackets to start the day. <laughs> well, thanks for being with us, Tina. We appreciate you sharing what your company does. It's very innovative. You know, you're, uh, I think, right on the right track to help manufacturing uh, find those skilled workers. I think it's a very innovative and creative approach. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for the opportunity. They can, and your listeners can email me if they have any questions at tinaz at skillsgap.com. 
And I love that you say the two Ps. It's actually the challenge of the skills gap with the solution of the skills app <laughs> combined <laughs> into how we named it. <laughs> so ah, and, excellent, um, very cool. And then they that can follow cool. us on LinkedIn too. And um, if they comment about your show, they might actually get a fun little piece of swag that we'll send their way. So listeners, follow us on LinkedIn and mention this, this talk radio. A manufacturing talk radio show and we'll um reward you like we do in games <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much dina and and while you folks are surfing around please stop over at jacketmediaco.com where you will find this podcast as well as two other weekly podcasts and two series that we do and as always we appreciate you listening to this episode of Manufacturing Talk Radio.